I'm now honored to introduce the class valedictorian, Ayushman Chowdhury. Good evening, everyone. Thank you all for being here, and congratulations once again to the class of 2021. Before I continue, I'd like to do a small activity with all of you. If your name is Michael, or Mike, or Mikey, or any other variation of Michael, please stand. We should, should have a few. There we go. Everyone else, please give all of them a round of applause. You may be seated. And if you haven't realized already, this concludes the mic check. <laughs> Thanks, percussion. <laughs> Grateful to a friend of mine for sending me that joke uh, about a year ago. I finally put it to good use. <laughs> Speaking of being grateful, I've been thinking a lot about gratitude lately. Um, gratitude for our friends and family, for the lives that we lead with smartphones and cars and all the luxuries that we take for granted, for the right to a free and high quality education, and to now be set free from those 13 years of education. <laughs> There's so much to be grateful for. My mom has a phrase that she repeats often, uh, to have an attitude of gratitude, an attitude of gratitude. It rhymes. In many of our daily lives, we sometimes focus too much on our shortcomings or complain about our misfortune or argue with others. And I readily admit that I've fallen into that mindset at times too. I'm not perfect either. But instead of dragging ourselves down with all those negatives, having that attitude of gratitude means to switch that mindset to think about the good things in life. And I'm not saying to never talk about anything negative, simply balance out those negatives with as many positives as you can. I have a story about my mom that illustrates this. My parents were both born in India and moved here in 2000. They came here with essentially nothing except for a few small suitcases and a promise of a job for my dad. They faced many of the challenges that immigrants do, being away from their families, adjusting to a new culture, and driving on the right side of the road. <laughs> but despite all of those, they stayed. Why? Because they were grateful for the opportunities the United States provided them, and eventually me. And because of their gratitude, I get to be here today, on this stage, giving this speech. An attitude of gratitude. And now I get to pay it back to them. So thanks for sitting through long classical piano concerts and driving me to music competitions and FBLA conferences and raising me to become who I am today. Round of applause for my parents, everyone. <laughs> but it's not just being grateful for your surroundings. You have to be grateful for you. And every one of today's graduates, and I'm sure you in the audience too, but come on, it's our day today. Every one of us has some special talent, whether you're an athlete, a musician, an insp aspiring scientist, an artist, a Mario Kart champion. There's something about you that makes you special and unique. There's an interesting quote that's commonly attributed to Albert Einstein, everybody is a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it is stupid. And to be honest, I'm only giving this speech because I'm a squirrel. Metaphorically, metaphorically, sure I climbed the trees, but there are some sharks here. There are some giraffes. There are some wolves. And speaking for all the metaphorical squirrels, 
I cannot swim as fast, howl as loud, or reach as high as any of those animals can. So to all the metaphorical sharks, giraffes, and wolves, be grateful for those abilities that are incomprehensibly amazing to this squirrel. Jumping back to the human world, here's a brief snapshot of the talents behind me. The first three people that come to mind are a three-time All-State golfer, a Berkeley-bound guitarist and music producer, and a budding writer who's already directed an entire play with the opening night players. And there are many, many more incredible talents among today's graduates that I could only dream of. So I ask you all to remain grateful for all those talents and by consequence for yourself and have that attitude of gratitude. Granted, there are days when you don't feel like having that sense of optimism. Maybe you're feeling down and are having trouble picking yourself back up. Maybe you're in an argument with a friend. Or maybe one of your last high school marching band parades gets rained out. Whatever it is, sometimes you just need to be able to ground yourself in the present. Especially after the last year, living through a global pandemic, social unrest, and the whirlwind of events that's happened in between, it might be hard to have that sense of optimism. I get that. But one of the ways that I've been able to ground myself is by identifying tiny things around me that I'm grateful for. Every morning when I wake up and every night before falling asleep, I take stock of those little things. Depending on the day, it might be a funny conversation I had with a friend or a really delicious dinner. Anything and everything counts. And I highly encourage all of you to try this. It's helped ground me on days when I haven't felt my best. And overall, it's made me more optimistic about life. In fact, let's do this activity together right now. I'll guide all of you through it, and you can close your eyes if you want. I want you to rewind to this morning and think about one thing that happened that you were grateful for. Maybe you got a text from a friend. Maybe you had a warm cup of coffee could honestly be something as simple as brushing your teeth and being able to have running water. We take it for granted, but just think about how many people around the world don't have that luxury. For example, this morning I was personally grateful for my breakfast, blueberry pancakes. <laughs> Try and think of something and just remember what that moment felt like. And let all those good vibes sink in. Now I'm hungry for blueberry pancakes again. <laughs> All right, let's jump back to right now. And let's scale this up a bit. Look around you and think of three people, three people for whom you're grateful. The activity does work better if those three people are somewhere here today, either among the graduates or in the audience. Don't say their names out loud. Just keep them inside your head. And I'll share mine, just to give all of you an idea. I'm grateful for Mr. Delassus and Mr. Diamond. You two count as one person, by the way. <laughs> Thanks for keeping EHS Music alive during this crazy year. Both of you have helped me become a better musician, a better leader, and a better person in general. I'm really going to miss you and all the instrumentalists and all the vocalists. And speaking of music teachers, I would be remiss if I didn't thank Mrs. Biggie for introducing me to the clarinet all the way back in fifth grade at Windermere and setting me on a journey that spurred so many incredible memories and experiences. I'm grateful for the group of students that I sat with at the front table in honors chemistry. I remember after finishing our classwork early, we'd have some really engaging conversations. And sometimes they got political. But, but, what I always reflect on is how cordial we were. Sure, we disagreed on opinions and argued verbally, but we were always friends and treated each other with respect. I'll always be thankful for those memories, and I hope to keep having good conversations like those in the future. Y'all know who you are. And lastly, I'm grateful for the three friends who always waited for me outside of the band room on the way to AP Literature. Y'all also know who you are. It's incredible. We always waited for all four of us 
outside the band room before walking to class. Thanks for your kindness and humor, for conversations about calculus and college roommates and band concerts, and for just being there for me when I needed your support. After being virtual for more than half of the year, you made me feel welcome back in school. I can't thank you three enough. Okay, I've stalled enough, so hopefully you all have three people by now. And what I want you to do is for all of you to stand up. Right now, yeah, yeah. You behind me too. All right. You all standing up? Okay. On the count of three, I want you to give the loudest standing ovation that you possibly can to the three people that you thought of. And we're, not yet, not yet, on the count of three. <laughs> and remember that while you're clapping for the three people in your mind, it's quite likely that there are others here today clapping for you. So here we go. One, two, three. Thank you all for listening and congratulations to the class of 2021.